Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you something really cool that you could do with Proxmox, which is virtual GL. So let's get started. Now I've been using Proxmox for many, many years and I've actually attempted this a few times over the course of the past few years, trying to get virtual GL to work and pass through to my VMs, which means it's basically running the onboard graphic card or whatever graphic card you have, and it's passing the GL portion or the processing portion over to your VM without actually having to pass through a full graphic card. It's really good for day-to-day -day use if you're using something like Blender or 3D uh, software or anything with video editing that uses OpenGL. It's not really geared for games, but it does work for games because that's actually a really good testing factor to see where your limits are. But ultimately, we now have that support in Proxmox natively without having to compile the kernel or do any extra steps to get it working. So that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. Now, to jump into my desktop a little bit, I am on a Proxmox environment on actually a a mini PC. So this is an Intel Nook that I'm using. You can see it's an i5 8th generation. So it's not anything powerful. It's got four cores and uh, four threads. So totaling in eight. And um, what am I using? 2.3 gigahertz. So this is not in any means powerful. I got 16 gigs of RAM, but it's enough for me to um, test out the operating systems that I need. So sometimes if I'm playing with Zorin OS or Alpine or something like that, I could at least spin it up without physically needing a computer to uh, be used. I could just test it over here. So what we're gonna be doing today is this Pop OS. I already have some stuff installed, but one of the main things you have to change is this hardware. Swap over here, go to displays, and if you go to edit, you could actually choose between, normally it would have been standard VGA, but you could choose the virtual GL GPU, and that's what we have using. Now default is 256, so you don't have to change this unless you need more RAM, but uh, GPU memory, I mean, but 256 is perfectly fine. Uh, once you reboot the console, everything should work. Now, keep in mind, this only works for Linux operating system, not for Windows or anything. So popping into console mode, if you use normal console, this is just regular VNC, so it's not super quick, but there is spice enabled. As soon as you use VirtGL, spice is enabled. So I'm gonna pop over here and use spice, open this up, and there we have it. This is a little bit smoother, but it's not perfect. I mean, if you really need the acceleration or the smoothness, you could use something like Moonlight or something that will, you know, I've done previous videos on streaming software and Moonlight would probably be your best bet on this type of setup. Now I'm gonna do full screen, which is Shift 11. And I have a few games installed in here that are OpenGL. Uh, Rise of Tomb Raider, I couldn't get OpenGL to work, but other ones like Space Run, Rebel Galaxy, Kerbal Space Program, they work perfectly fine. So I'm gonna show you what I got going on here. Now sound does pass through, but it's not great. It's, it works actually better in Windows, but in Linux, the sound doesn't pass through that great. So I'm gonna launch Rebel Galaxy. I'm not really gonna play a game, but I'm gonna show you how it actually works and how smooth it is or not smooth. But we are using Spice, which is faster than uh, VNC, but yet slower than Moonlight. Make sure this option is checked off, OpenGL. It does not work with Direct3D. They don't have Vulkan installed or working yet. It is in the works. So it's not, don't knock that out yet. It will eventually come. But for now, we are still stuck on OpenGL, which is more than enough for most Linux operating systems if you wanna get, like I said, Blender working or some video editing software. So here we are, we are in the splash screen. Uh, this is using an Intel um, AM, uh, um, Intel 600 GPU and, or something like that. So we're getting about 24 frames, 25 frames per second in the main screen over here. Uh, the audio is skippy, um, so it's not the best with the audio, but in Windows it actually does a lot better. Windows actually has a delay, but the audio doesn't skip around. But as you can see, it's 19 frames per second. Watching the intro, all this is moving around. It works really good. In Spice, it actually works semi-decent. I wouldn't play games with it, but it's smooth enough for me to actually watch videos or uh, actually use OpenGL. And it is absolutely playable. Like, that's 24 frames per second. Now, if I was to pop into something like Kerbal Space Program, which takes a lot less resources than uh, Rebel Galaxy, give it a second, it does take a while to boot up. Don't close this out, just leave this, and it'll eventually boot up. And there we have it. Like this is the loading screen and it's doing 220 frames per second.
All right, so the game finally loaded. You can see it's doing about 60, 70 frames per second. This is just the intro. I could start game and actually get into something. Um, I just started learning how to play Kerbal Space Program, and it's actually been a lot of fun um, learning those science points and trying to get into space. So it's, pretty, it's been pretty fun. So, yep. In this space port over here, you do about 11 frames per second. Say if I go into the vehicle assembly, um, I think we get about 40 frames per second. Uh, let's see, 20, 29, 30. Yep, about 30, 40 frames per second. If I want to drop this in there, I could actually do that. Uh, let's drop an engine into the bottom. Um, utility, let's drop one of these parachutes. And we're not gonna try to go far, so let's just kinda um, change the solid fuel to like this much and we'll blast off. Uh, launch pad proceeds, recovery vehicle. Yeah, clear the launch pad. Next. I was playing around with something and I left something out there. Should have recovered it, but oh well. I forgot this has cloud save. So here, obviously, if you don't know how to play, you have to do like different stages on getting this to go. So I got stage one, stage two, uh, space bar to launch. I'm gonna run out of fuel soon. Oh, I can't even detach, but it's gonna lose its momentum. Let's pop open the parachute. Ooh, maybe it was a bad idea to pop open the parachute. But yeah, 12, 11 frames in planet. It's actually very low frame rate, but this is a pretty bad idea. Okay, there you go. It's playable. Let me close this out. I'll recover the vehicle later. But yeah, absolutely um, playable. You could actually do this if you wanted to. That is it. I mean, I really like the fact that now it's actually um, built into Proxmox. And also I'm using version 7.2. So anything above that, I'm guessing you're gonna see that option. So if you wanna play around with it yourself, I just showed you how to unlock it through the hardware. So yeah, give it a try. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, half till it hurts.